just as really a high level for those who weren't paying attention. Everyone knows Trump was banned from uh, Twitter and uh, team Trump was banned from Twitter and they, they ran over to parlor. Now parlor, I know a lot of people in our community love parlor. I've always kind of found it a little bit janky, so I don't really, I don't really like it, but it's your own personal choice. I support alternative platforms. I have a friend who's uh, on the exec team at Parler, so great. Good good luck with Parler. I hope that works out. Um, however, uh, immediately after uh, Team Trump went over to Parler, you saw a lot of people, I don't know if they were leaving Twitter, but they, they were either adding Parler accounts in addition to Twitter or leaving Twitter and going to Parler instead. Um, kind of following him on mass, and I think on Saturday it was like something like 1.5 million signups or something ridiculous, right? Um, was it Saturday? Maybe Friday, Saturday, something around that time frame. But of course, uh, Google, the Google Store. Uh, so you know, there's basically two major phone operating systems: Google and iOS, the Apple Apple system. And so, if you want to have an app on the Google phone on any phone that runs Google's operating system, Android, uh, you need to go through the Google store, I think. There's probably ways to get around it, but for normies, they go through the Google store. So the Google store banned Parler uh, from the phone. Now, uh, as I mentioned in the video that I made um, and that I released this morning, like 80% of social media traffic is over mobile. So that's a pretty devastating thing to do to a company. So they banned it. Apple then turned around and said, well, you've got 24 hours to implement your own ministry of truth. And if you don't, we're banning you. And then they banned, then they banned anyway. Uh, and by the way, mm -hmm. let me just jump in here for a second. Parler does have a TOS and they do, there, there are things that are beyond the, the pale for Parler that they remove yeah, like sure. any of these platforms. <laughs> and, and we, I will say this, if you've been watching us for a while, we've been covering these, these uh, accelerations of the purge before this current acceleration over the past two years. And there's a blueprint for all of this. They did all of this with Gab and they made Gab jump through all these hoops and Apple would say, well, you got to remove this. And then Gab would do it. Well, you got to remove it and then you got to remove the it. And yeah. it's a double standard because they don't make Twitter do that stuff. I think Gab uh, has but, been but, off no. of Apple and Google for... I think one of them they were kicked off in 2016 and the other one 2017, something like that. Gab's not been on mobile devices yeah, but for they, a while. My point is they've already got a blueprint for what they're doing. They yep. did all of this to Gab. Yep. So uh, so they so they did that. So that's bad enough. And then what they did was uh, then the real death knell happened. And I don't think Parler will come back from this personally um, at all. It might. <clears throat> I hope they do. Uh so when you build a website, you often use hosting services to do, to kind of manage your servers. And for a bunch of technical reasons I don't want to get into, it's very difficult to do otherwise. You basically, there's a few different service providers. Um, and one of the major, most popular ones is Amazon Web Services, AWS, well, which I've, I've used before. And it's, there's a lot of tools, everyone write, there's lots of people write stuff for AWS. It's, it's the way to do something. It's one one of the major ways. Well, Parler was using AWS and Amazon announced that they were going to kick Parler off at midnight on Sunday. So like a few hours ago. And they did. So Parler is gone. Uh that's that's they're they're gone. Parler's gone. Uh now of course they'll try and get back. Uh, but I believe I haven't checked this morning, but if you here, I'll check right now while we're talking. If you navigate to parlor.com, it prob it probably doesn't it, they may have put up a splash page somewhere, but it probably doesn't uh doesn't give you the full site. Uh can't can't be reached. <laughs> so they didn't even bother to put up a splash page with a message, which you know maybe they should have done. So uh so it's dead. And uh and that's kind of the high level of what's happened, and, and I go into some details about how companies can do this generally and censor you in the video that I had this morning. But the other thing that I want to talk about with Parler, and I don't know if you saw this, Carrie, is so mm -hmm. when when AWS, Google, and Amazon all, sorry, when AWS, Google, and Apple all blacklisted Parler, of course, smaller companies and other service providers, other partners, ditched them as well because, of course, everyone's afraid. They don't, you, no one wants to be on Apple, Google, and Amazon's blacklist. I mean, 
that's not a list that's not a list you can survive on as a tech business so they started jumping ship as well and they all abandoned parlor almost almost immediately and one of the services that abandoned parlor was twilio now twilio and this again i'm not trying to be technical but this is important twilio provides uh, some of the authentication stuff, like when you type in your password and I handle usernames and password and like two-factor authentication, like texting you or whatever. Now, Parler, and this is Parler's fault. I'm not throwing Parler under the bus. I'm just being honest. Parler, Parler did a crappy, crappy, the worst possible job ever on security. Um, mm. What they did was they wrote a system that when Twilio failed defaulted to open access instead of shutting you down what should happen when 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 they when you try and log in if twilio's not responding if twilio's not there if it's not working what should happen is you just get locked out you can't you can't access anything that's the secure answer however when twilio announced in a press release that they were ditching parlor twilio also revealed their hand they revealed what services parlor was using for twilio and i'm going to show you something this is pretty disturbing this is why i think parlor will not come back ever let's take a look take a look at what some hackers did <clears throat> Oh, I heard about this. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but a group of developers um, latched onto the press release that Twilio put out. Twilio put out, and they realized, uh, without reading all this, I guess I guess I won't. The main the main person here that's coordinating this is Crash Override, which is uh, at donk underscore nb on on Twitter. Uh, what they realized was that Twilio was or Parler was incorrectly using Twilio so that um, when you couldn't log in, when Twilio went down, when Twilio dis disconnected from them, you uh, it defaulted to letting people basically reset passwords and get administrative access to Parler. And so this person, this hacker, Crash Override, you can go through her tweets here. She talks all about all the stuff that she's done. Obviously, these people are on the left and hate Parler, so they're doing this out of spite. They downloaded everything that was ever uploaded, basically, to Parler. It's, it, I don't think they have driver's licenses and that kind of secure information, at least according to the attacker. They didn't make that public. I, I don't know if it means they got it, but didn't make it public. Oh, because I heard they did have driver's licenses. They might have it. They, they might very well have it. So... Here, here's this tweet. Since a lot of people seem confused about this detail and there is a bullshit Reddit post going around, the only things that were available publicly vi only things that were available publicly via the web were archived. I don't have your email addresses, phone or credit card numbers unless you posted it yourself on Parler. Um, now, I don't know if it means they didn't get them or, or they just had them and didn't archive them. But what they've done is they've made this parlor archive they've got roughly what 56.7 terabytes worth of data um and they've got everyone's parlor information they've basically archived the entire entire parlor website and of course they're running around gleefully saying uh you know we've got the nazi database basically oh um, my gosh right? we can we can see everything that they've been doing on <sighs> Um, so these people are psychopaths. They are, uh, like they are the Nazis. How do you <laughs> not, are. how do you, how are you so unmoored that you don't, you can't see when you're behaving like a Nazi? Are you, is it just that you don't have the historical knowledge or context to understand what it is you're doing? Or you're just, I think, I think it's partially that, but I think it's also that you're just, you're so unmoored and so ungrounded. Yeah. It, you can't, you you don't you don't you're not even in touch with yourself or what you're doing or what your behaviors are your behaviors are nazi behaviors you are dehumanizing people who disagree with you and calling them all nazis all 70 something million 
Trump voters, I guess, presumably all conservatives, I guess, presumably all liberals and progressives who didn't vote the way you wanted them to. They're all Nazis now. Yep. And what have you said we can do to Nazis? You know, you, you are behaving like a Nazi. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, the hacker community is generally left leaning. Um, so you had um, I'm just looking at Twitter now. Real real OG anonymous basically immediately tweeted out uh, breaking due to Twilio cutting services with Parler. There is no phone verification or two factor authentication active. You can enter random digits and register. Have fun. No email verification is required. Either the floodgates are open, everyone. So they all they created thousands of administrative accounts so they could quickly download as much information as they could um and uh that's where we are and i i the reason i think it's important is i know a lot of people get excited about <laughs> social media stuff but just because someone isn't facebook or twitter doesn't mean they're doing a good job with your security and you know I, you can't sue parlor for this because you're not a customer and frankly, they're going to be dead now anyway. Um, so just be aware. Be aware.